So I was thinking about how the loss of ego uh, connects to recovery, to my recovery. And um, well, my truth is that it was beautiful, tragic, and necessary. Um, and what I mean by that is that many of the uh, childhood experiences that I had been through, I didn't understand at the time uh, what kind of impact they had in creating my beliefs about myself and the world and where I fit in and what my value was. Um, I didn't understand that until later in life that there was this lens that was being created for me through the experiences I had been through, right? And I had just chalked it up to that's just the way the world is or that's just the way I am, not really understanding that that's how I had become as a result of what I had been gone through as well as the beliefs and the meaning that I had attached to what I had gone through. And all this started to make up my personality and how I saw myself in the world. And the only way for me to recover was to dismantle or destroy that so that a new, more clear and accurate perception could take its place. But I couldn't really do this myself. I, I can't fix myself. You know, that'd just be like, you know, trying to do surgery on yourself. It's like, how are you gonna use a broken brain to fix itself? It doesn't really work that well. And it wasn't until later that I gained an understanding of, of why the pain and suffering and surrender were so important why the dissolving of this self was necessary so that a healthier one well could take its place a more accurate one a clearer one one that was based in love and hope and meaning and purpose and validation and so you know, as I get long in the tooth, I have, I guess, been given some gifts of wisdom to understand that this is a necessary part that I have avoided my entire life. Like the portal to the life that I wanted and happiness I was seeking was through the very things that I spent my entire life avoiding. And the only way that I was able to do that was with a power greater than myself to guide me through that. And so while we talk about, you know, the dissolution of the self or the death of the psyche or ego, what I'm really talking about is dismantling enough to move it out of the way so that we can take a look at what are the useful parts that we need to keep and what do we need to discard because it no longer serves us. And that's the process of recovery that has began for me in December of 2002 and that continues even up until this moment, right? It just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't end. As I grow and change, it grows and changes. But I do know that surrender is kind of a daily thing. Just so that that well, you know, that ego that was developed in the first 20 years of life doesn't show back up and start driving the bus again. It no longer serves us. No longer serves me. No longer serves why I'm here. I'm still watching that unfold.